This right here is the Minisform U100L, but this isn't necessarily the main point of this video, more of a vehicle to check out Intel and their new budget line of CPUs. When thinking of getting a budget computer or a laptop, you may be thinking of something like a Chromebook or something like this. This is the HP Mini 110-3030NR. And I have featured this laptop in the past as probably the worst laptop that has ever been manufactured. It shipped with an Intel Atom N450, a single gigabyte of RAM and a 32-bit version of Windows 7, even though the CPU is technically a 64-bit architecture. This thing was essentially unusable, and that is what many people think about, or at least think about the experience of when looking at lower-end machines. And after playing with both this Intel N100 mini PC as well as a N65 Intel laptop, I can say that this is simply not the case anymore. For several generations, Intel's low-power chips have either been Celeron or Pentium Silver with the occasional Atom release mixed in there. However, Intel announced in 2022 that both the Celeron and Pentium brands are going to be retiring in favor for their new Intel processor branding, including the N95 and N100 CPUs. So first, let's talk about power. These are some of the most efficient processors that Intel has ever released, with a base power consumption under load as low as 6 watts. And when it comes to this entire machine, I was actually able to test this. And when plugged in on idle, it was indeed hovering around those 6 watts. But when I went ahead and ran a intensive benchmark for this example, it was Geekbench, it then pulled around 12 to 14 watts. And this makes them pretty good for use cases like media and file servers where blazing fast performance isn't really necessary, but needed to run the surfaces all the time while not having to worry about a huge power bill. And the cool thing about these guys is it only uses efficiency cores. If you've been looking at some of the newer Intel CPUs, you probably know that they have a number of performance cores and a couple efficiency cores where the efficiency cores kind of take over most of the workload when it's not doing anything intensive, but then the performance cores take over when it actually is having to do something like render a video or whatever. These Intel processors only have the efficiency cores. And these E cores don't have hyper-threading, so they don't provide two V CPUs per core like most of the other processors. But with that said, hyper-threading doesn't actually add like double the performance of a CPU, which is important to note. But those V cores are definitely helpful when doing something like compiling software or rendering video. But if you're not planning to max out the CPU with heavy computations, you probably won't miss hyper-threading. With that, I did kind of run some just general things to see how this little mini PC performed. And the very first thing in Microsoft Edge, I loaded up the Crab Rave video to test its 4K and lower resolution performance. At 4K, it did run, but it was a little stuttery here and there. But I did go ahead and drop it down one notch to 1440p, and in this case, it ran with no noticeable stutter, but in the actual information, there was still a couple dropped frames here and there. From there, I loaded up GIMP, and I didn't have any issues at all. I ran a typical lava render, and it actually rendered out in a fairly good time. And then lastly, something it didn't do very well on, and this isn't really a huge surprise, is rendering out a video from Caden Live, a free and open source video editor. The cut video that I rendered out was just about 6 minutes, and it took 19 minutes to render out a 1080p video, so 3 to 4 times the length of the actual cut to get that rendered out. But the question you're probably asking yourself is, can this little thing game? The answer is not really. It's not what it was built for. Now, I did go ahead and make some assumptions. If somebody is going to try to game on this device, I would assume that they're probably trying to play something like Minecraft or Fortnite. In Minecraft, I was generally running around the 20 frames per second mark, but with some tweaking in the settings, I had it steady around 30 frames per second. So I would say it's playable for Minecraft, but it's definitely not a great experience. Now, Fortnite was a nightmare. I didn't even try to get an FPS reading. It was so bad. I could barely tell what was going on, and that's with it defaulting to the lowest texture settings. Granted, I will know I was able to actually get a kill, so, I mean, that was pretty cool. Now, a reason for this, and something to be aware of, is that these N-series chips have a single channel of RAM along with integrated graphics. That means that bandwidth available to the memory used for the GPU is limited compared to a system with two or more RAM channels. So these aren't really ideal for low power gaming, but again, it's no big deal if you're doing basic light work like web browsing 
or running a lightweight media server. I will note that other YouTubers have had success using this for emulation, whether that be retro gaming or even some PS2 gaming. And that might be something I go ahead and check out in a dedicated video on this channel, so do make sure you subscribe and ring that bell. So now what we're going to do is talk about performance and benchmarking. I ran Geekbench on this machine, the N95 machine, as well as another machine that I have. This right here is a Geekom PC that's the Mini Air 11. That one has the N5095, which came out in the first quarter of 2021. The N100 and N95 came out first quarter of 2023, so it's about a two year apart difference. While the Celeron PCs are not going to be nearly as power efficient for the performance you're gonna be getting. Right here's a chart for very comparable models of the Celeron and new Intel processor line. We can see when it comes to cores and threads, they are all the same at four cores, four threads. And we can see we're getting just about half a gigahertz of a performance boost going to the new CPUs, as well as about two megabytes of additional cache with various cache types. Now TDP between the 5095 and the N95 are the same, same with the N5100 and N100 but with the same TDP, you have the additional performance boost. And when I say performance boost, we can see this chart right here. This is the Geekbench 6 results. The only one I wasn't able to run myself was the N5100. I pulled that result from Geekbench directly. And we can see over a 500 point score difference from the old to the new generation and over a thousand point score difference between the generations for the multi-core performance. And of course, across the board, the 95s are going to be a little bit more powerful than the 100s as they are going to be able to consume a little bit more power. I also ran Nova Bench on both of these devices and we had very similar results with speed performances across the board, whether that be the processor, graphics, RAM, all that. And I will be linking down below to the Geekbench results as well as my Nova Bench results if you are interested. Starting on the outside here, we have our power button. We have two USB 3.2 Gen 2s as well as a 3.5 millimeter combo jack. If we flip it on over to the back, we have a pretty decent IO. We have both HDMI and display port for your display. We have a single gigabit ethernet, which I do wish it had two, but that's not too big of a deal because then that would have allowed us to use this as like a firewall or a little router. We do have a USB 3.2 type C here, as well as two USB 2.0 ports, which kind of sucks. Wish they were three, but that's okay. And then last but not least, we have our 19 volt DC in. Uh, I said last but not least too soon because there's a little TIFF card reader or TF card reader here. So you can put a little micro SD card in there if you would like to. So now let's actually open this thing up and see what we got going on with the internals and talk a little bit more about some of the other specs. All right, so here is the Minisform UN100L and we are gonna open this up real quick. And the very first thing I noticed is it has these rubber feet pads. Now, a lot of other mini PCs use like a sticky thing. So when you go ahead and pull this off for the first time, you're actually messing with the integrity. These are not. They're just kind of divoted a little bit, so it pulls in and out with ease without any like sticky material to screw that up, which is nice. So you go ahead, pop all these off, and we do actually have extras in the box, which is nice. So then whip out my screwdriver. This is a custom one from LTT, the Expo, which was super cool. There are four screws, and there we go. All of our screws are removed. So now this should pop off fairly easy. Right here we have a little arrow that says front to kind of help with the direction of that. So I can just put my nail in here and pop this off. So here's a plastic part. There's nothing attached to it, which is nice, but there are some screw holes that I see. And we have this right here that's kind of taped down. This right here is to add an additional uh, 2.5 inch either SSD or spinning disk car drive if you want to increase the storage. We have the hard drive for the one that I got. This is an NVMe 3.0, 256 hard drive from a brand I've never heard of. Go Fatu. <laughs> Went ahead and pulled that out. This is what it looks like. I'm gonna leave this off to the side. Here we have a battery. Our Wi-Fi card is right here. You can see the antennas. Right there is an internal view of the TF card or a micro SD card. And really, when it comes to things we can interact with, that that's about it. Let's see if we could take this apart any further. There are four more screws, so let's take those out. These ones are definitely a lot shorter. All right, there's the last one. 
and it looks like this might be pretty easy to pull out. None of the actual slots or ports or anything are sticking out too far. There we go. I'm going to shimmy it up this way. Looks like the TIFF card is kind of blocking our exit. So let's try to pull this plastic out of the way. There we go. Now I'm not going to rip on it too hard as the uh, antennas are connected to the top here for the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth. But we can see the top here, pretty decently sized heat sink. We got what looks like a cut right here or just somebody was screwing with this when they put it on. One thing you may notice is there's no RAM slot. So the RAM is not upgradable on this guy. And that's because we have the LPDDR5 RAM. So there's it's gonna be integrated onto the board. So that is something you're gonna to wanna to keep note of when you go ahead and purchase this thing if you do decide to. Now I would tear this apart a little bit further, but I don't want to mess up the integrity of the uh, thermal pad or the heat sink or anything like that. So I'm gonna leave it as that, but you technically could just take these antennas off and use this as a little single board computer if you want to. Maybe get some standoffs and mount it onto something. That might be pretty cool. So just know that is an option if that's something you're interested in. So now I'm gonna try to fight this thing back in there without hopefully causing any damage. And there we go, a pretty good device for $200. You could use it as a PC if you just want to do some light work on it, or probably one of the better use cases is using it as a little entry level home lab type device. So with all that, anything I mentioned will be linked down below and do make sure you subscribe as there are some awesome videos coming out. With all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.